So we're going to look now how to add up binary numbers and then how to create some digital hardware which can do the binary addition. So there's four basic rules for adding single bits. So we've got zero on zero, this gives us zero. Zero add one, gives us one. One and zero, gives us one. And one and one gives us zero. It generates a carry, which goes into the next column. And we can add that up to give you one zero. So that's just the same as uh, decimal addition. If you've got um, six plus four, you know, get, that gives you zero and a one. That carries into the uh, tens column. So those are the four rules for adding single bits. So we can put them in a truth table. So, so zero and zero gives a no sum no carry. Zero and one gives us a one and a sum column and a zero and a carry column. One and zero is one and then no carry. And then one and one gives a sum of zero and a carry of one. So now we've got the truth table. We can design a circuit that implements that truth table. And it's actually very easy. If you take a look at the sum column, for example, we can see this pattern here, and we should be able to recognize that as an XOR gate. That's just an XOR function. So to implement the sum is just A, XOR, B. And then for the carry, again, that's um, very simple. You can look at the carry column, and you recognize that as an AND function. So the carry is only a one, when A and B are both one, so that's just so we can say the carry out equals a dot b. So the circuit that adds together two bits we call a half adder circuit. So we can see the circuit implementation here. So the sum is just given by the XR of a and b, and the carry is given by um, an AND function. So the previous rules apply to single bit addition, but when we Adding multiple bit numbers, you know, the, the carry out goes into the next column. So when we're adding up that next column, we've actually got to the sense of adding three bits. We've got to have two bits we want to add together, plus any carry what might have uh, come into that column. So we'll look at some examples here. So if we're doing zero, one plus one, one. So we know zero, uh, one and one, sorry, it gives us zero. And it generates a carry into this column. So we need to add up these. So again, we've got the same situation again. We've got two ones. Adding them up. So that's going to, again, give us a sum of zero. Carry one into the next column, which we're going to add up. So if we do this in um, do the decimal equivalence there, we've got one plus three. Obviously, it gives us four. So that's fine. And the next one, zero and one. We know this gives us one. 1 and 1 gives us a 0, carries a 1, that just goes into that column. So again, that's just 2 plus 3 gives us 5, which is correct. Look at this last example. We've got 1 and 1, we know now it gives us a 0, carry 1. And now in this situation, we kind of have to do it in parts, I guess. So I guess add these together first. So that's going to give us a... Um, a zero and carry a one here and that zero we can add to this one to give us a one and the one in this carry column so that's three plus three so that's just three plus three which is obviously six so we can these rules for adding up three bit numbers we can again put in a truth table so we've got a two inputs a and b Plus now we've got this carrying column. So these are just, um, again, because we've got three um, bits, it gives us a two to three, eight possible combinations. So we can just go through so you can see, we only, so we only, we generate a sum every time we're adding up um, a zero and a one. So for these situations, for example, we obviously generate a one here. But for the carry, so we only generate a carry you know, when we've got, at least two ones 
in that column. So that's when they get the ones in the carry column. So the circuit that implements this three bit addition, if you will, we call a full adder. Unfortunately, it's not as easy as a half adder. We can't just look at these eight put columns here and then just come up with a hardware. You know, so we need to use Boolean, the Boolean expression and use Boolean algebra to simplify that. So we start with the sum. Again, these are just the min terms. So the sum, we've got these four min terms. So just put these here. Now we can simplify it. So we can look at the first part. You can see we're all actually, there's a common factor here and here. And I've also got, um, you know, these two, these two are also common factors. So we can take those eight as a common factor. And then by looking at this, we can recognize this actually as being an expression for an XOR gate. So this is just an XOR expression. If you look at the Boolean expression of an XOR. And also, if we look at this, we can see that this is the expression for X no. So we can simplify that there. And then by looking at this, we can actually see that this is another XOR function. So we just consider these to be, because we know XOR, if we look at this part, for example, this is an error XOR. So we know that on each side, we've got a positive, a complemented version, a non-complemented version. And then here, we've got non-complemented and complemented. So we look at this situation. Here, we've got not carrying. And then here, we've got carrying. And then if we consider everything what's in these brackets, this is to be so one uh, variable. You can see on this side it's uncomplemented, and then on this side it's complemented. So we can recognize this as being another XOR function. So that actually gives us, it's essentially a three input XOR gate for the sum. So this also highlights so we can use an XOR gate um, to check the parity of a number. So by parity checker, you know, we talk about how many bits are a one. So for a parity checker, the eight put is a one when an odd number of inputs are a one. That's the case for an XOR gate. Now we'll look at the carry out. So we're just doing a, we're going to do a similar thing again. So now we're looking for, essentially just looking for common factors. So here, for example, you can see we've got A and B on both of these, and on this, and then for these two remaining terms. You can see we've got a common factor here, a common factor there. So it's going to take out those common factors and we end up with this situation. So we can simplify this further. We know that this is just going to be equal to 1. So A and B and 1 is just equal to A and B. And again, from this situation, again, we can start recognising. So this Boolean expression, we can see that it's an XOR. So we can simplify that bit further. That, that bit just goes away and that becomes an XOR function. So that gives us the simplified expression for a carry out. So we can implement that in terms of hardware. So this is this is the um, circumvention of a full adder. So we can see the sum is essentially this three input XOR uh, gate here. And then the carry and we just build uh, we're just implementing that expression using the required gates. So this is a circuit now. It can add in three bits and it generates two output bits, a sum and a carry. But when we want to add up two multi-bit numbers together, you know, we can't do that just with a single full adder. So we need to connect up multiple full adders. So we need a full adder for every bit. So we've got, if we, add an, if we want to add up two four-bit numbers, we'll need to use two four, uh, four single-bit full adders. And then, as we do the, when we do the addition on paper, you know, when you create, when you create a carry in, carry out of one column, that passes into the next column. So the carry out of each full adder is passed into the carry in of the next full adder on the chain. So because this carry just goes along this chain of adders, we call this a ripple carry adder. So the first full adder in the chain is the least significant bit. You know, when we start doing addition, we always start from the right hand side. You know, least adding up the least significant bit. And then 
we know as well the first column you ever do the adding up there's no carry in there that's the st that's the first addition you do so there's no carry in there so the first carrying of the in the chain of the first full adder is set to zero and you've just got multiple full adders chained together and the last one in the chain is the most significant bit and depending on the actual what the sum is you know the final you know there might be a final carry eight bit as well so this so this would be a four bit adder so this is a least significant bit on the left so that's implemented with a one full adder so we've got a zero b zero going into there and then that generates a sum so this uh, the first sum bit any carry out just feed into the next one in the chain and so on so this these carries are just rippled along the chain so we might end up with a final carry out but it's important to note when you do this that the first carry in is gonna you know we need to set it to be zero you know there's never a one in that first column as you will when you're doing some addition so we'll look at an example now so we'll consider we're doing this four bit addition we've got zero and one we're not giving us a one it doesn't generate any carry so um, one and one gives zero that's going to generate a carry into this column so now we've got a carry here so we've got one and one gives us zero and then again that creates a carry so we add those up with one and zero carry one so now in this final column even though we're adding up run adding up four bit numbers we've actually generated this carry eight bit what's here so this is essentially in this 16 uh, value column so we know this is a so units column twos four eights but this final carry out is actually gone into here what's a 16 column so this addition is valid for both signed and unsigned numbers so we convert so zero one one zero and we consider it to be a unsigned first that's equal to six and then one zero one one is eleven so when you add obviously six plus eleven gives us seventeen which is what we end up with here we've got a one in the sixteenth column and this one in the units column which gives us a seventeen but it also works for sign numbers as well because we know again zero one one zero is just going to be six but for, when we're considering these bits to be sign numbers we know that this column now is worth minus eight for example so we've got minus eight plus two plus one for this number here so minus eight plus two plus one gives us our minus five so we know six plus minus five just gives us one which is the same which is what we end up with here if we ignore the final carry out so we're just going to essentially ignore this so when you're doing signed when you're adding up signed numbers the final carry out doesn't mean anything you just have to completely ignore it so look at the example now for this doing that same um, same addition using the actual hardware the a four bit ripple carry adder so now this is a this is this one is our least significant bit so that's that zero and it's that one so it's the least significant bit so it's only starting from the right that's that one that's that one this one is here so that zero is to here and now we've got that zero we've got that one so you just split each of the each of the bits of the numbers you just split off and they feed into um, each of the full adders in the chain. So zero and one. Uh, remember to set the first carry in to be zero. So that's going to generate a one in the sum column. And then it generates a carry, which then just feeds into this next full adder in the chain. So then we've got so now we're adding one and one, the carrying of zero. So that gives us zero. And now it's going to generate a carry. So that just feeds along then we're just adding up these three numbers so again that's going to be zero it's going to generate a carry that feeds in here so we add up these three bits that gives us a zero it 
generates this final carrier heat. So that's the same um, answer we got before because this is the most significant bit. So we have to write, you know, that's the most significant bit. That's the next that one. So we have to write this in reverse. And then we've got this final carrier heat as well. So this is the same answer we got previously.